So I've piled up a bunch of different things that patients have told me, and I want you guys to stay tuned until the end because the last one might shock you. It's only a matter of time before we get this media room together. As you can see, it's still a mess. Ain't that right? He ain't lying. But what is up, YouTube? It's your boy Zip back at it again with another video. I'm wearing an oversized scrub cap and. We finally are using this mic again, but um, yeah, we back at it again with another video. Shout out to everybody that has been supporting the channel. We're almost at 6,000 views. My goal is to hit that. I want to say at least by January like 4th or 5th, I'm on track for it. And um, yeah, if you made it this far, click like, click subscribe, and turn on your bell post notifications so you can see every time I post. That's it for the intro. Let's get into the video. In my time of working in healthcare, I have been able to work around a lot of great nurses, around a lot of great physicians and doctors, and I've also had a great time interacting with patients, more so the older patient population. It's a bunch of things that they've mentioned to me in my two and a half years of working as a CNA, but I want to focus on some things that I have actually never forgotten that patients have told me. And I feel like if you work in healthcare, you've gotten some great advice from somebody's grandma or somebody's grandpa, and it stuck with you literally still to this day. So some things that I have never forgot from patients, I've compiled a list and it's sitting here right in front of me so I don't forget anything. But I'm going to go over a few things that I have been told in the two years of me working and I just haven't forgot it. It stuck with me this entire time. And I also give this as advice to other people that are in my same shoes or asking me for advice or just feel like they really need to hear it. If I just feel like they really need to hear what I have to say, I just let them know my advice. But the first thing that a patient has told me that I have never forgotten was do not rush into a career. The first thing that a patient has told me that I've never forgotten and I keep this as my number one is do not rush into a career. If anything, that could have been nothing but great advice because at the time I was letting him know, hey, I just stopped my sales career, two year sales career working in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, I decided to go back to school for nursing and I feel like it's something that I should do I feel like it's something that I need to do and I feel like it's something that I want to do and he basically just put that confidence in me and say Don't worry about a career. You know, I'm 75 years old and I've done many of different things starting in construction um, which is actually the field that I was into construction rentals and construction sales and He let me know basically, you know, hey uh, don't rush into a career like I started out as a in construction worker Then he went into working for a tow truck company end up owning his own tow truck company competing with his family members for um, Having a tow truck company and then he went into real estate It was like a major major long career and you never know what is going to be your niche You never know what is going to be your calling You never know what is going to be like the thing that pushes you there to get to where you really want to be so Definitely want to keep that as like my number one thing. Do not rush into a career. If it's been important and real in my life, I know it's been important and real in other people's lives too. I've met, read many, I've read many stories about people starting in rank one career and leaving and doing something else. So just wanted to put that tad bit out there. Number two is going to be take the time you need before marriage. This is something that I talked about literally like two weeks ago on my channel, but it was talking about relationships and kids and marriage and everything. And I can 100% agree you should definitely take as much time as you need before marriage. Like I said, I'm in my mid to late 20s right now and I'm thinking about marriage and I'm thinking about getting married coming up pretty soon, but I'm still giving myself time. I'm giving myself grace, 30, 31, 32. Seems like an ideal age to think about marriage prepare for marriage, start getting ready for marriage. So definitely don't want to rush into that. I feel like there's been other relationships where I absolutely thought I wanted to marry this person. But as time goes on, you learn more about yourself. You learn more about your goals. You learn more about things that you like. And some of those things change. So definitely something that I definitely want to take my time with. Marriage is not going anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. And just want to take as much time as I can before I take that step also marriage is very real especially in my generation my opinion is down in the dumps in my opinion but the jesus christ <laughs> there's still some good people out there good marriages out there and i aspire to have a great marriage as well number three is something i already knew but i definitely wanted to input into this video is do not carry grudges carrying grudges like it's it doesn't do you any good if anything it 
hurts the situation rather than helps it. Um, I've seen people carry grudges and they die with them. They passed with grudges on their mind, on their heart, um, with family members that are deleted or unalive and no longer here. Um, it's not good to carry judge, uh, grudges. It's not good to take anything personal either. It's not good to carry grudges. You should always try to remedy any issues you have with anybody because half the time is not worth the argument. The other half of the time, you don't know how much longer that person is going to be here. So carrying grudges and maintaining like little, you know, BS arguments is not helping anybody. If I ever have any issues with anybody, I try to fix it and help the situation however I can. It's not worth it. It's not worth my time. Let's move on to the next one. The next one, a patient told me, worry less. It will take you to an early grave. This is a woman patient that I had. She spoke about how she was a mother of like four and she you know, was married twice and she, in her whole entire existence of life. She's always worried, always had high blood pressure, always stressing over something. And she realized if she would have just taken time to herself, taken time to not worry about a lot of those things, then it wouldn't have affected her in a way that it's affected her now. Um, I think now she's, you know, has chronic hypertension and she has a lot of heart issues and everything too. A lot of that stuff is not good for you. And me seeing it firsthand, I worry about my lifestyle. I worry about um, the healthy lifestyle that I'm trying to live. I worry about school. I worry about work. I worry about money, even though you shouldn't really worry about those things as long as you're producing and, and doing what you need to do to handle. Like you can't worry about what's not here. You can only worry about what is here? You can only worry about what issues you have that's in front of you right now. You can't worry about things you can't control. And that's a something that I've done better with. I used to like meditate. I used to like do affirmations and stuff like that. But now I just go to the gym and I just pray. I just pray. And that's all I really need. That's all I've ever really needed. And yeah, so I try to worry less. Worrying less is going to be it's going to be the greatest thing for you, for sure. The next one that I have for you guys is you cannot take it with you. I've had a patient before whose family member was in a professional league. And um, basically they said that, you know, if they would have known that this patient was going to have heart complications at this age, they would have taken that trip last year. They would have bought this. They would have did that. And I thought to myself, like, you know, you can't take it with you. A lot of this stuff, like tangible things that you want to buy. I'm not telling you to go buy it, but if you have an opportunity to get something, get it because you don't know when the, when your time or your calling is going to be, take that trip, um, buy that, you know, expensive thing. As long as it's not putting you out buy that expensive thing, live a little, I try to live as much as possible. I plan to jump out of a plane in 2024 and I want to record it for you guys to see it. So Definitely take the time that you need to take to experience what you need to experience and don't worry about what's to come because life is short. If anything I've seen and know working in healthcare is that life is short. You can't take it with you. Save, be smart, invest, all that good stuff. Leave something for your kids or your grandkids or your you know family members and stuff like that. But also just know that you cannot take it with you. So take whatever opportunities you can because life is short. You can take it from me working in healthcare that life is short. Another thing that a patient told me was to never change. Um, I try to be the best person that I can be, and I'm not tooting my own horn with this one at all. I'm just saying, like, I do well with helping people. I'm very compassionate, very empathetic with people, and I understand, like, you know, especially working in healthcare, like, you're going through a tough time. I'm here to just help you with whatever you need help with. Try to be a good person. You know, try to care, stuff like that. Patient told me never change. And um, I was like, you know, I don't plan to. I plan to continue to be the me, you know, be a representative for black men, be a, be a representative for young black men in the healthcare space, be a representative for black people in the healthcare space. I want to, you know, always uphold that within the best regard and um, do well with my image and helping people and showing people that, hey, you can be black too in healthcare. You can be a black man in nursing. I'm just out here trying to make it, you know what I mean? I'm just out here trying to make it. But the last one I have for you guys, I didn't want to make this video too long, was going to be to trust God. Um, uh, a lot, I know a lot of people have different religions. Um, I have a lot of family that's, 
you know, they worship different religions in my own, you know, personal life, my own personal family. But I just know that if you trust into a higher being and you, you know, let go of what you can control, let go of what you can control and try to, you know, pray and hone in on the good about what you can do. It will most likely happen in your favor. You know, everything happens for a reason. I have that tattooed on my chest. Everything happens for a reason. And there's no rush to do anything because as long as you with God, as long as you pray about it, as long as you work hard towards certain things, stuff will work with you. You know, uh, I think the saying goes for like prayer without work is nothing. It adds up to nothing. So pray about it, work for it, go accomplish it. That's all I have for y'all on this video. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on your bell post notification so you know every time I post. And that's all I have for y'all on this video. And I'll see you on the next one. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Peace.